one day after people. The invaders are on the move. In the more than 2,500 square miles of marshes and swamps of Florida's Everglades, the ancient domain of the alligators is attacked by other cold-blooded giants, Burmese pythons. In 2008, more than 300 pythons were captured in the Everglades, just a small fraction of the estimated 30,000 of them believed to be slithering through the swamps. Burmese pythons were first brought to Florida as exotic pets, but many were set loose by owners who could no longer control the rapidly growing snakes. You start off feeding them mice, then rats, then rabbits, and then you have to figure out what you want to feed them, five or six rabbits, or where do you get food for your snake? The flesh-eating invaders, some as long as 25 feet, steal prey from the native alligators. In the time of humans, teams of government trappers tried to catch and remove them. Without people, there will be no, no check. With no humans to control their spread, can anything stop the pythons? There are more than 4,000 invasive species in the United States alone. Not just animals, but killer plants as well. An invasive species is an organism, whether it's a plant or an animal, that comes from another region, usually another continent, and they have no natural predators, competitors, or parasites in the, the new habitat that they occupy. And so they're able to expand very quickly and become invasive. Just one week after people, rivers and lakes from Florida to Texas are dying as invasive weeds from South America multiply with no humans to clear them away. One plant, the water hyacinth, is a pretty purple flower with a dark side. It sucks the oxygen out of the water, which doesn't allow native species, especially fish, to survive and thrive. So it could double its population in any given habitat in a week to two weeks. Only people could control their spread. So now the invasive species are winning the battle by forfeit. Some of the most aggressive invaders are also the smallest. As many as 400,000 species of microscopic bacteria and mold spores attack everything that was once alive. Many of these organisms are so small, 250,000 could fit on the head of a pin, and they live everywhere. They begin to devour the organic matter, the food, the wood, the carcasses of animals left behind in the absence of man. Predators of the dead, large and small, are feasting. The, uh, usually the first insects that'll be attracted to the body within a matter of minutes are flies. So they can smell dead body from miles away. After a few days, then you start having uh, other insects that are more carnivorous. Other vermin attack living animals, including millions of dogs who depended on humans to keep them healthy and who now must fend for themselves. Some breeds fare better than others. Ten days into a life after people. <laughs> Some greyhounds have escaped from the more than 40 dog tracks around the United States. In Florida, one group of the hounds now roams free. Often fed raw meat to increase their competitive instinct when chasing mechanical rabbits, escaped greyhounds now hunt real rabbits, as well as rats. These dogs track with their eyes not their noses. Well, greyhounds are sight hounds, and they're used to hunting down their prey by running. They also scavenge for food. But this often requires cooperation. 
and greyhounds have been trained to beat their competitors at any cost. If the dogs would begin to compete for that resource between each other. <laughs> so there's going to be aggression, lots of fighting. The streamlined greyhounds have thin skins and are easily injured. For them, the race to survive will be short-lived.